good morning today we are taking up sons and lovers by d h lawrence yesterday we had taken up the first chapter and that was a summary today we will be analyzing the first chapter before we take up chapter 2 Let's see what exactly we find in uh, chapter one. The chapter first, uh, the first chapter is presented mostly from Mrs. Morrill's uh, point of view, and the writer narrates it. as an omniscient voice but at times the voice is detached also uh, to say it also dwells on the inner emotions of characters we find that her life is explored fully and she represents intellect and she is a girl or a woman that has not been allowed to flourish fully because she is born as a woman and she always thinks that it is weird that a john field whom she befriends in the novel as a young girl she finds that he is unable to take an act upon any kind of decision although he is a man and her reaction or her reflections show how deeply she feels or how her feelings are so repressed and she is hurt on being a woman because she thought that probably being a man one can do as one wishes and she learns that it is not enough to be just be a man her choice in the form of walter morrill is weird or odd as he is a sensual man given to pleasures but it can be understood that as he is different from her own father that thing attracts or draws her towards him it also points out how opposite things or how opposite people attract or repulse each other moral is seen irresponsible man as he is seen squandering money besides this he does not pay his bills and he has huge debt of uh, on him he does not even pay attention to his children and the marriage that was seemingly happy in the beginning is kind of a disaster and things start falling apart as gertrude representing intellect and walter who is representing sensuality or the body they are at loggerheads with each other or they are in sharp conflict and this 
conflict has this kind of conflict especially has always interested Lawrence. Now, as the couple starts differing, dif drifting apart, we find that Walter continues to drink and spend his wages, while Gertrude shifts her attention as well her uh, as well as her affections on her children. And in a way, she starts living only for her children. At that time, she has William and Annie. And when she shifts her affection towards William, the most famous, renowned psychoanalytical theory of sexuality given by Siegmund Freud about Oedipus complex is then explored in the novel. Lawrence has used several psychological symbols to demonstrate the complex relationships. For example, when Walter feels threatened, at the time when he sees the love that he thought should have been showered on him, being showered on William, and out of anger, jealousy, or revenge, he cuts off his curly hair and it can be seen as a symbolic castration, after which an argument begins and there is further drift in their relationship. Now this is all uh, for today, but one should not forget that D. H. Lawrence is one of the greatest English novelists of the 20th century. And he is not only a turn of the century uh, social reformer, but he is also an artist, a writer, who is deeply concerned with human relationships. This is all for today. Thank you.